Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants video. In this case, uh, a little more broad NFL topic video, but there's a lot of news that transpired today and some of it kind of directly affects the Giants. That being, you know, obviously the new CBA was passed uh, very slightly. I think it was like 51% or a little like, I mean a little like 51 point something percent of the votes voting yes for the CBA, it was like 1,019 yes and then 900 and uh, what was it like 989 voted no or something like that. It was like a very slim margin. I can't remember the exact number. But the CBA was passed, which of course infects all NFL teams. Also, a uh, within that CBA was this sort of a weird rule thing where if you release a player and their cap hit, which would usually take uh, the hit over one year you cannot stretch it over two years that directly relates to the giants also and i may get into the offensive line market as you know we had two free agency extensions resignings that sort of broke their respective markets which was expected but let's get into what i can cover because i won't be able to cover everything that happened today so first and foremost the new cba was passed like i said it was very slim vote i just got the numbers pulled up here a thousand and nineteen voted yes 959 voted no so just like a separation of 60 and that was extremely close according to everything that um i heard you know i was watching the nfl network this morning that there's been like you know that division within the players association for months now when they're they were talking about the cba and whatnot this is something that we've known but we never knew the details of and not at its past well there's nothing they can really do about it they're trying to send this message of oh there's going to be 10 years of labor peace now i mean i don't think any of us expect that the players always find a way to sort of not make things peaceful and i really want to be on the player's side but they never they, all they do is that you know they tweet out that the cba is bad they tweet out that it's wrong but they never give us any reasons and that's sort of why in terms of the publicity like war i guess you could say and i think i said this in another video the nfl side is winning against the players because the nfl is actually providing some details as to why the cba could be good there's reasons why the cba is bad but we don't know them because the players won't provide their side so i mean you guys make your decision there but the quick points obviously the main thing is that uh there will be 17 games in the nfl season now as opposed to 16 but that won't take effect until the 2021 season starting immediately like this season there's going to be um i think eight playoff teams each in addition of two more teams to the playoff field for the 2020 season and the uh salary cap which is currently at 198.2 million so right around 200 million would raise to around 230 million so not the huge raise that 240 was but you know an additional basically 30 million dollars is still a lot for teams to deal with and like i said before that one rule that really relates to the Giants that in a salary cap hit can be extended over multiple years now over two years. So if you guys want to learn more about the CBA, I would advise you to just go read up on it. There's many articles on it. You could go directly to the NFL website to see their article on it because it's a really deep document. You know, there's no way anybody could really explain it in a simple way. You're just going to have to go and read it for yourself. But the main points you need to know the salary cap, the extra game, the extra playoff teams. Uh, I think there's uh, benefits that come with it for, you know, past and present players in terms of health benefits. The NFL still is now willing to give them lifetime, you know, health insurance, which is something the players should have fought for a little bit more, but that wasn't passed. Nevertheless, let's get into the cap hit situation. In case you already haven't picked up your, or you already didn't know, the player I would be talking about here is Nate Solder. And the whole reason the Giants haven't really cut Nate Solder yet is... Or at least the main reason is because his uh, cap hit is just too big to take on for one year. I think it's going to be like around $13 million cap hit, you know, just off the top of my head, not exact number. But it was going to be too big to take on one year. Now, with this new CBA and this new rule, they could release Nate Solar and then they could extend that, you know, $13 million over two years and it will be a bit more manageable. Now, should they do it? Uh, you guys might be surprised by my answer. I still say no, because even though Nate Solder is overpaid everybody is overpaid now i mean ryan Tannehill just today signed a four-year 118 million dollar deal that's paying him around 29 and a half million dollars 
putting him right up there with, you know, the top five quarterbacks in the league type of money. And he obviously is not a top five quarterback in the league, but that's just how the market works now, especially in the QB market. It's absolutely insane. Everybody's getting paid hundreds of millions of dollars, around 25 or $30 million a year when they don't really deserve it. And Tannehill is an example of that. I mean, good for him. He got the bag, he got his money. But he, does he deserve it? Nope. Did he break the quarterback market You know, once again? Yeah, and I say once again because every time a quarterback becomes a free agent, they just go out and they sign a big deal that makes it harder for the next team to sign a quarterback. I think that deal right there is like around 15% of the Tennessee Titans cap hit. And looking down in the future, I mean, at least for Dak Prescott right now, you know, just to go off on a little tangent real quick, Dak Prescott is over here rubbing his hands together looking at Jerry Jones like, yo, if Tannehill got basically $30 million a year, you know I'm getting $40 million a year. And that's crazy because Dak Prescott, while he's better than Tannehill, once again, not that top five QB. And even if he was, no one player should be making like $40 million out of your $200 million cap space on your team. That's just insane. Like, I, I'm... I was never a fan of that. I know a lot of you guys are not a fan of that, but the quarterback market is just insane. And now with the even the tackle market, um, the left tackle from the Colts, if I could get his name pulled up real quick, Anthony Costanzo, today he signed a two-year $33 million deal. Uh, now that's kind of like on par for what left tackles typically get. I think that's like $16 million a year. Nate Solder's contract is somewhere around there. Costanzo was the best left tackle on the market. Is he the best left tackle in the game? No. So by that convention, you can consider him overpaid, definitely. But the way the left tackle market or the tackle market in general is going to get thrown out of whack now is now for sure, uh, Jack Conklin, his name slipped my mind for a second. Now for sure, he's going to be expecting like a $20 million a year deal. And Jack T Conklin is a right tackle, not even a left tackle. And that is basically getting into the quarterback type of money, running back quarterback money that right tackles are going to be demanding now. And so now the, the tackle market is broken. So, you know, the, the market for every position is going to go out of whack. I don't know what's going to reset it, but it needs to be reset because teams can't function like this <laughs> where they're playing, you know, positions and only like two, you know, two players you know, like two positions, like half of their cap space is just not going to work out. So something's going to have to reset it. I have no idea what's going to be. But getting back to Nate Solder, I wouldn't cut him because A, when we cut him, you create another hole on your team. And while Nate Solder is overpaid, everybody else is overpaid. But he's still, he's still going to be our best option at left tackle. What are you going to do? Go out there and sign somebody else for the same price that Solder was basically. And they might perform worse than he did. Or are you going to wait until the draft and then draft your left tackle? All right, that's good. But you still have the whole at right tackle, which if you kept Solder, keep him for one more year. You know, let him play out his contract for that. You know, I think he has two years left on his contract, but let him play out one year of those two years. Fill in the right tackle hole, possibly the center role, and then take care of left tackle next year. You know, it's all about managing the team because the Giants have a lot of holes. And I don't think they could afford creating another one for themselves by cutting Nate Solder, even if, you know, the cap situation is in their favor now a little bit more. Like, you know, for that for that reason, I don't think we should even think about cutting Solder. But you really got to look at it because you cut him, you got to replace him. You don't want to go into free agency because now everything's out of whack. And if you go into the draft, you're going to come in with a, still a very incomplete offensive line, unless you focus heavily on the offensive line again. But then you're going to miss out stuff on your defense. And like I said, the Giants cannot afford to do that. They simply have too many holes on their team. But that's what I got for y'all right now. Let me know what you guys think. The CBA, I mean, I am very neutral on it. You know, like I like that we have more football, but at the same time, that's more chance for injuries of players. So that's kind of bad i like i'm not sure how i feel about the new playoff format sure it could help out the giants this year now that they could possibly sneak in with like an eight and eight record or something but at the same time it kind of dilutes the playoffs because there's more teams in there it doesn't seem as elite as it should be you know the playoffs are supposed to be for the best of the best i don't know how i feel about that and well with the cap space now i really hate it because now everything's out of whack but let me know your thoughts down below i'm out Alright guys, thanks for watching, put your comments down below, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.